Okay, so um, yeah, so, so this paper uh, is about behavioral service graphs. The purpose here is to look at uh, how we can analyze internet-wide um, infections and internet-wide um, scanning activity. So this work is uh, conducted by my friend and colleague uh, Elias Bauherb in uh, Florida Atlantic University and myself. Um, so to give you a quick outline of the talk, first and foremost, introduction to talk about how this stuff uh, looks like and how it works. Oh, sorry. Hope he goes. Can you hear me better now, yeah? Yeah. I'm not really loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, we're, we're going to start with the introduction. A, a motivation behind this work um, <laughs> to talk about exactly what the contribution uh, that we've uh, outlined in this paper. Um, talk about some related work. Um, we're going to be a lot more depth in the uh, paper itself, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it here, but just to give you an idea. Uh, talk about the, the approach that we've taken and uh, show you an evaluation of it. We have uh, evaluated against two different types of, uh, uh, of scans. Um, talk about some of the limitations of this, of this approach and some of the uh, improvements that we might be able to uh, come up with, and then talk about some future work. Um, so I just want to start by showing you a small video. So, um, this video is made by um, by uh, Kayla in uh, California. And what's, what this is showing is a stealth scan by a botnet uh, trying to analyze um, a range of uh, IP addresses slash zero um, for open ports, like seeing what, what software is running there. It's testing for uh, IP telephony uh, port scan, so uh, SIP is the protocol that they're uh, looking at. Uh, just to give you an idea, I get that there's some flashy circles here and it's all moving very fast. So each frame that you're looking at here represents uh, 5 minutes 20 seconds. And what this shows is the, um, the scan, the source of the, the scan, the bots that are uh, conducting this orchestrated, coordinated, distributed uh, scan. Um, so each circle obviously represents a geolocation, so uh, looking up the GeoIP, uh, sorry, the GeoIP databases to find out where the IP address is located. The size of the circle represents the number of uh, active nodes that are scanning from that particular location. Uh, and the color of the uh, circles that you're looking at represents the volume of traffic. Okay? I get that the, the keys that here on the bottom of the video is pretty small. I'm happy to share this link with you uh, afterwards if you want to have a look at it uh, closer yourself. What was interesting looking at this is that the graph that you see on the bottom left of this video represents uh, the number of nodes that are partaking in this investigation over a period of about 12 days. Okay, so it's a, it's a prolonged orchestrated scan. Um, and you can see here on the bottom right, it demonstrates how it actually processed through the entire address space that it was scanning. So you can kind of see the, the, the method that it, it followed through. You can see the orchestration behind the entire uh, attack. So, um, yeah, so, so the motivation behind this, that's the type of uh, attack that we're trying to detect, that we're trying to uh, identify through behavioral analysis. Um, so recently, I mean, the, the idea of uh, DDoS attacks seems to be in the news every, every day, every week, there's a, there's a new type of attack. And uh, the most recent or maybe most famous of this is the, the Mirai botnet, which you've all probably heard about or read articles about online. Um, so Mirai took, well, actually managed to take down some of uh, Amazon's uh, AWS services and uh, Twitter, um, so it's kind of a famous example. So, the motivation again behind this is that uh, internet scale infections and orchestrated events are continuing to escalate, they're becoming far more commonplace. So there's a need for uh, a prompt, formal, accurate solution to be able to uh, operate against this kind of big data, big data origin from, from uh, internet attacks. So basically what we're trying to do here is to have an approach that's formal um, and will actually exploit some kind of data analytics techniques. Um, so some of the challenges that you have trying to conduct this type of uh, investigation and detection. Um, so there's a lot of information. So when you're dealing with network traffic analysis, you have an awful lot of information and you have an awful lot of low quality evidence, to be perfectly honest. So you have an awful lot of false positives, false negatives. There's a lot of data that you need to uh, churn through to identify the pertinent information that might lead you to draw some conclusions. Um, network forensic approaches are either passive or reactive. So they generally employ manual ad hoc methods, and they're generally very time consuming. 
Um, and most current network forensic practices do not support uh, a distributed inference. So the idea of having multiple uh, nodes record information and then you use the information that you get for, from all your detections and to build that into a, an inference to, to, to deduct what's going on. So the first analyst to go through our, an error prone process of correlating the unstructured evidence to try and figure out what the security incident is. So just to briefly talk about some related work. Uh, so the written work in this area typically falls into two main categories. So you have uh, anomaly detection, so network anomaly detection, uh, using graphs, so trying to uh, identify it that way, or you have a big data kind of forensic approach. So you have a lot of data, you're trying to use some data analytics techniques, and you're trying to infer what's happening uh, after the fact. So what we're trying to do in this uh, paper is to fuse those two approaches together to be able to hopefully get the benefit of both of those approaches. So we can, um, we're trying to, this is kind of our contribution, this is our aim. Um, so to infer uh, internet-wide infections, uh, to le leverage probing activities uh, using a set of behavioral analytics to try and infer <coughs> their infections, um, employ a new concept of uh, similarity service graphs to try and infer campaigns of infected machines, and we're exploiting a graph theory to infer uh, the niche of the infected campaign, which I'll talk about in a little second to define that if you're not familiar with it. Okay, so our, our approach, so our approach works on, um, this is, like, it's designed for a security operations center. Um, we're looking at dark, a darknet data, so we're looking at an internet scale data that targets routable, allocated, yet unused IP addresses. Uh, it attempts to infer infected bots by characterizing all of the programming activities, which are the very first signs of uh, an infection, and then constructs a, a, a graphs and manipulates them to be able to infer uh, an orchestrated campaign. So you're trying to analyze all of the all of the data that you're gathering, you're trying to group them together to infer what that campaign is trying to do and what that infection is that's causing that information. Okay, so the first step there, uh, infer and characterize the uh, probing, probing activities. So we're looking at darknet data and um, there's a, a range of uh, resources and approaches out there to try and look at, uh, to gather and, and analyze darknet information. Um, for this particular piece of work, uh, the Cyber Threat Intelligence Laboratory in Florida Atlantic University had a previous approach, so we use that. Um, we could try, then try to uh, characterize the behavior, um, looking at the probing strategy, the randomness that there is in the, in the traffic that's being uh, generated, um, based on uh, statistics and heuristics. Okay, so to give you an idea about how this um, kind of feature extraction works, the behavioral uh, identification works across the different types of behaviors that we, we looked at. So the first thing is randomness. So randomness in the campaign in terms of uh, exactly what is happening, what ports are being scanned, where the, where's the traffic coming from. So the method that we used for that is the uh, Wald Wolfowitz method. You'll have to excuse, excuse my pronunciation throughout this entire talk when I talk about uh, the methods, but bear with me. And then what we get out of that is that we end up with the characteristic being identified as being either random or it has a pattern. Very straightforward. We then look at the probing strategy. So the methods that we employed for that are both the man Kendall method and the chi square goodness of fit method. All of these methods are referenced in the, in the paper for, for completeness. And then what we end up with that is that we either can identify that there's sequential probing, probing taking place or just permutational probing, probing taking place. We then look at the nature of the probing source. So what we do for that is we analyze the randomness and uh, um, the actual probing strategy together and then we can infer whether it is likely to be a probing tool or whether it's likely to be a probing plot. We look at the target that's being analyzed then, so um, the methods that we use for that is we look at the concept of uh, relative uncertainty and we look at the uh, theoretic method, metric and then we can determine whether the, uh, the target is dispersed or not. And then we have some uh, other kind of miscellaneous uh, inferences that we look at so we look at the, the rate, which means how, much, how many packets, how, how quick is the information coming in, how, how fast is the attack occurring. Uh, and we look at the port numbers that are being scanned. Okay, so then what we can determine from that is the rate, so the number of packets that are being uh, executed or uh, sent per second. The uh, destination overlap of that, so what, uh, um, is there a commonality between the, the, the destination of those packets. And the port numbers that are being looked at, so you can infer probably what, what type of uh, vulnerability are they, are they probing for. Okay, so I mentioned that we were looking at behavioral service graphs. 
So what we do here is we kind of cr we, we, we create a vector for each particular piece of uh, information that we have. So when we try and infer what a, what a particular bot is, we look at the randomness, the probing strategy, the target, the, uh, the rate, the destination's uh, overlap metric, and the port number that are being uh, looked at. <coughs> so then when, once we have that vector created for each um, bot that we've identified, we can um, create a behavioral, behavioral service graph. So the nodes in the graph are the actual uh, bots themselves, the scanning uh, nodes in the network, and the edges then are the weights related to their similarity, the similarity in terms of their behavior. So each graph then will cluster a number of bots targeting the same port, and that will define an orchestrated campaign, like the video I showed there with the, the, the SIP attack. Okay, so if we look at these two bots for, uh, as an example, so bot one, we've Identify the behavior to be random, sequential probing, uh, probing dispersed probing, probing 60 uh, packets per second, uh, destination over overlap was 100, and the port number that they were looking at was port 80. Bot 2, you see here you have the, the, that there's actually a pattern in the traffic, you have sequential probing, it's targeted uh, 55 packets per second, the destinations overlap for the was uh, 200 different uh, hosts, and the port number was 80. So. What we're looking at here is trying to, uh, oh, my rectangles have moved slightly, but we'll, you can see what's going on. So what we're looking at here is trying to come up with a, a score to assess the similarity between these two bots. So we look at each of the characteristics, and what we have, the, the only uh, uh, thing that we have to infer here is that for the, the, the rate, the, the packets per second, because that's kind of variable in a lot of different things, uh, we allow a threshold of 15%, plus or minus 15% in the, in the rate to say that they're the same. Um, so the behavioral similarity between these two bots is 50%. So you can see that there are three of the, the, the behaviors, the characteristics that we've identified are the same. Okay, Okay. so then what we're trying to do is um, we're trying to allow the prompt uh, inference of bot infected machines. So we're trying to detect what machines are, are infected. Automate the, uh, um, the amalgamation of the evidence from the distributed entities and provide some sort of insight into the behaviors of those infected machines. Okay, so I mentioned earlier the, the, the niche of the, of the botnet. So the niche of a campaign defines the nodes that uh, aggressively infect other nodes or that they're heavily used in uh, the command and control communication for the botnet. Um, if you're familiar with peer-to-peer -peer networks, it's something similar to a, a super node or master node on those networks. Okay. Um, so then what we do is uh, we apply a spanning tree algorithm to create an erdos Reni random subgraph. Any objections to the pronunciation? No? Okay. Uh, so the nodes then with the maximum sim similarity are determined to be the niche nodes of that bracket. Okay, so um, again, the, the unique characteristics of the campaign, so we have the population of the bots, which would have several orders of magnitude. Uh, it targeted the entire IP address space, and the bots then are, are, are using orchestrated strategies to max, maximize the coverage for the target host that they're trying to scan. Um, so if you were able to identify the niche of the, the botnet, the, the, the super nodes in the network, if you will, and you were able to eradicate those in some way, shape, or form, to simply block, block their traffic or whatever you're trying to attempt to do, um, you can limit the propagation of the campaign. It's not probably going to stop the campaign, to be honest, but it is going to uh, hurt it quite significantly. So time. Okay, so talk about the, uh, the evaluation of this approach. So um, there are two different uh, deployment scenarios for this evaluation. So the first is kind of an enterprise scale scenario. So you have a, a, a medium or large enterprise and you uh, are identifying that there's some suspicious traffic on your network and you're trying to infer what is that is exactly going on within your own network. And the second then is trying to scale that approach up to a, an internet scale um, attack. Okay. Um, okay, so first and foremost, we need to have a ground truth here. So to evaluate this technique. So what we use here is, um, it's a, a 15 gigabyte uh, um, network traffic data set, which is, comes from the uh, security experimentation, experimentation environment. So the ground truth here is that this data has already been analyzed to be um, 
an orchestrated program campaign from the Cairn and Botnet. So it's, this is considered one of the largest and most uh, compre comprehensive pro probing census that has been conducted on uh, IPv4. So the outcome of that approach, when we analyze our, our network, we see that there are, uh, we infer that there are 10 uh, infected machines, and we're able to cluster those machines together based on the, the behavior of the individual nodes. We are able to identify that uh, two of those nodes are the niche of the campaign. So again, the, those two nodes are responsible for infecting the largest number of other nodes, and those nodes are probably part of the command and control of that author. Okay, to move that up then to the internet scale approach, so again we needed to have data to work on and we needed to have a ground truth to assess the methodology. So we, what we used here was um, darknet data. So uh, we operate the, the approach here, the scenario is that it would be in a, a security operation center. Um, and the ground truth here is a probing campaign from October 2012. Um, and this was reported by ISC to be um, targeting SQL servers, internet scale SQL servers. So the outcome of this then is that we were able to infer uh, and cluster close to 800 unique SQL infection bots. And again, using the similarity of these particular uh, infected nodes, we were able to identify that 84 of these bots were part of the niche of that campaign. Um, so again, the, er the eradication of those 84 nodes would greatly hinder the progression or, or the, the influence of this campaign on, on your network. Okay, some limit, uh, limitations to this approach, so, and some improvements that we could make. So first and foremost, um, there's a need to fortify the infection evidence. So we're currently working on correlating uh, malware with its probing traffic to try and accomplish that uh, um, fortification. Uh, there's a need to find a formal mathematical computation to infer the niche of the campaign. So currently what we're relying on is a, a threshold related to those subgraphs that we create. Okay, but we need to come up with a mathematical method to, 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 to verify that. Um, and this is experiment, experimental, right? So we're currently addressing the scalability issues of the approach, and the idea is that eventually this would work in, in near real time um, on darknet data. Okay. Um, so to conclude here, we, um, this approach fused uh, data analytics with formal methods. Uh, that approach has kind of rarely been investigated for uh, analyzing botnet behavior. Um, we, we are leverage, leveraging that fusion to be able to infer um, orchestrated internet-wide campaigns and to identify the niche of those uh, attacks. Um, so this is a step towards um, leveraging big data analytics with formal methods to be applied to kind of cyber security. Um, so pr primary results in an SOC model are, are promising, it's still early days, early days. In terms of future, future work, we're looking to address the uh, aforementioned limitations. Um, and we'd like to be able to verify the soundness of the approach uh, in corporate networks using two-way traffic. So this is on the, on the, the plan. Okay, and uh, just to have some acknowledgements here, this research was funded uh, by the NSF in the in Florida Atlantic University, and there was also some collaboration with the Florida Center for Cybersecurity. And uh, yeah, that's all I have. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to attempt to answer them.